CO2 max. If you're an endurance athlete, this is a term that you've probably heard before, or I don't know, maybe you haven't. Um, but for me, it's one of those terms that I find myself Googling, and then a few months later, I'm re-Googling. Um, because although it's pretty simply defined, I just, I've just found that on its own, the definition is a little bit difficult to grasp. VO2 max is the maximum amount of oxygen your body can use while you're exercising. This definition is in the name itself, so if you think about it, V is the volume of oxygen, O2 is oxygen, and max, of course, is your maximum. The amount of oxygen that your body uses while you're at rest is much different than the amount of oxygen that your body is going to use when you're exercising. When we measure our VO2 max, we push our bodies to their aerobic limits so that we can measure the maximum amount of oxygen that our bodies can use while we're exercising. So the key word here is use. How much oxygen can our muscles use? How much can they take in and turn into actual energy? So as the intensity of an exercise increases, we consume more oxygen. We bring in more oxygen, more oxygen is transferred to the bloodstream, and our muscles gobble it up, using it to produce energy. But that only happens to a certain point. The process will plateau, our muscles will reach their limits, and there will come a point when they can no longer convert that oxygen into energy. So this point is our VO2 max, the maximum amount of oxygen that our bodies can actually use during exercise. To improve our VO2 max, we want to train our bodies to better transport oxygen and to better use that oxygen. Over time, interval training and endurance training will help us boost our stroke volume and increase the number of capillaries and mitochondria in our working muscles. These improvements will all work together to bump up our VO2 max. Mitochondria exist inside our muscle cells, and they're responsible for actually converting that oxygen our muscles receive into usable energy. Improving our stroke volume and building up our capillary networks ensures that our muscles get the oxygen that they need when they need it. But the number of mitochondria we have determines whether or not we're actually able to use that oxygen. The more mitochondria we have, the more oxygen we're able to use, the more energy we have. I actually did the test just a couple of weeks ago, and it's really simple and pretty quick, but it requires some specialized lab equipment, so it's not super accessible. So when I got to the lab, I jumped on the treadmill, I warmed up a little bit, and then they put this um, breathing tube in my mouth, and I wore a nose plug. Uh, the tube was held in my mouth by like this metal contraption thing, kind of like headgear for people with braces, I guess. It's probably the best thing that I could compare it to. Um, so not super comfortable, but also not horrible. So for the test itself, we set the pace of the treadmill at something that was relatively easy to jog at, um, something that I could maintain easily for about a half an hour without getting tired. So once that happened, they taught me how to jump off the treadmill effectively without hurting myself because the purpose of this test is really to max you out within about 10 minutes. Um, so by the end of it, you should be exhausted. Um, and they don't want you to fall off the treadmill with all of this stuff on your face connected to machines. So once the test starts, they bump up the incline by 2% every minute. It really wasn't so bad, uh, but then there was a point where it started to get pretty difficult in a hurry, and I started to think, like, how much longer can I go? Uh, I want to go to exhaustion, but I don't want to give up, and I don't want to pass out, so it's kind of hard to find that point because you have to choose when you actually get off. After I jumped off and I caught my breath, the competitive side of me kicked in and I really just wanted to do it again, just because surely I could go a few more seconds. So that was my experience, but if you're curious about your own VO2 max and you don't have access to a lab, if you look online, you'll find that there are a number of methods that you can use to estimate your own VO2 max. While VO2 max gets a ton of hype, it's actually not a fantastic predictor of performance, but it can be a good tool to use when predicting our general cardiovascular health, fitness, and our overall aerobic potential.